Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our Terraria modding tutorial series. Today we're going to learn how to make custom loot bags and treasure bags. This was a recommendation from the Discord, so if you guys are interested you can go ahead and join with the link in the description. There's a whole bunch of cool people over there. I think it's definitely worth checking it out. We've been growing quite a bit. We got like, a, I think it was the last time I checked over 2,000 people now. And I also want to quickly mention that I'm not going to be coding things live anymore, uh, at least not for the most part, at least not everything, uh, because it is very time consuming. And I think we've kind of gotten to a point in our Terraria knowledge where we can become a little bit more individual with our thinking and, uh, and kind of write stuff for our own and solve problems on our own. But I am going to be going over the core concepts and actually how everything works and why it works, which I think is probably the uh, most important thing. So first off, let's take a look at this file. I have a player spawn.cs file and notice that there's no PNG attached. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, and over here, this is my namespace, which is just the directory of where this subfolder is. And then I've called this uh, class player spawn. And right here I have defined it as a type or not defined as a type, sorry, my bad. It is derived from the type mod player. So mod player is just like a, a type definition for player, which is the base player class that all players from Terraria inherit from. And when we create an instance of that class, what we are doing is we are allowing ourselves to kind of uh, override the methods and functions and members within that class. So right over here, you can see we have our public override and we're gonna be overriding the add starting items hook. Yes, there is an add starting items hook, which makes our lives a lot easier. So we public override it and let's take a look at the function signature or definition for this real quick. Hopefully it will let us like look at it. Maybe not, that's, that's unfortunate. I think I might've uh, disabled IntelliSense. All right, I am back. I just uh, quickly reloaded my solution file and there we go. My uh, IntelliSense has revived itself. So now we can actually take a look at the types and they are nice and colored and way easier to look at now. If you want to find out what you can actually do, let's take a look at the actual base class of the mod player. All right, there we go. Now we can look at it. So right over here, we have ourselves. So let's go ahead and find the add items. What is it called? It is add starting items right there. This is the definition of this function. This is where the return type is defined. It is a public virtual. Virtual meaning it can be overridden, which is what we're doing right now with our public override and it returns a type of item, an I, an, an I enumerable item. Let's take a look at what this is. This looks like it's an enum. Maybe we can look at it, maybe we can't. Let's see. Uh, no, it is an interface, interesting. So I'm not gonna go delve too deep into that because that looks like we're getting uh, kind of very deep into the rabbit hole here. I actually don't think I can go any further. Uh, let's take a look at this right here. It exposes the enumerator, which supports a simple iteration over a collection of a specified type. So it looks like it allows us to basically just access the uh, type of our items you know, with maybe the T type being the actual item type. So like say log or torch or something like that. Uh, this will just store all the types of our items with a template of type T, which is what that is right there. Except in C sharp, you don't have to specify a template like you do in C++. You can just say uh, T or maybe T is defined as something else. Looks like uh, it might be. I really don't delve too deep into the mod player, so I don't really know anything about it, uh, but I do know this is the return type. And so this is what we have to return is just an item. So anyways, <laughs> Enough of that rant and looking at the implementation details. I know it can be a little bit annoying sometimes, but uh, it is really good to get an understanding of, of why something does something and uh, what everything means. Okay, now said we wanted to only give ourselves a starter bag when it was not medium core. Well, medium core is a Boolean, right? Which means it's either true or false. So if we have an if statement here, let's just say if medium core death, like that. And what this does is it will check the validity of this medium core death. If it is one, it will evaluate to true. If it's false, it evaluates to zero. So we'll have an else statement here. We'll say, if we're in medium core death, we will just simply yield a break. And what that'll do is it'll just basically break out of this function altogether and it won't do anything, uh, which is perfectly fine. That's what we want it to do. But if you want it to have items that respawn with you in uh, medium core after you die, make sure to overwrite this. And you'll actually notice I did not do that for my sorcery overhaul, which technically means that you could get a starter bag if you were in medium core every single time you died which now that I'm thinking about it, might be kind of an exploit. So I guess I just unintentionally fixed one of my potential problems with my mod. So this is why it's really good to check the documentation and the function signatures and all that stuff, because then you get a better idea of how things are actually working. All right, awesome. Now let's take a look at the actual code. We've been looking at all of this other stuff uh, and not the actual code that actually creates the starter bag. So right here, we create a new item. Item is a class. We're creating a new instance of it called starter item, and we are giving it the defaults. We're giving it a type of our starter bag. And we'll go over what that is in just a second, but uh, just note that mod content to item type starter bag like that, we'll give it a type starter bag. So let's go ahead and take a look at our starter bag.cs file. 
All right, here we go. I have found my starter bag. It didn't take too long, but uh, just make sure you organize your stuff, please, for the sake of you and anyone else who's working on your mod. Just please uh, organize your, your code a little bit. At the top, we have our usings. These are pretty much the main usings you'll need for most of your items uh, in Terraria. Besides maybe a few other things for graphics and potentially, uh, that's pretty much it. Um, this includes like vectors and all the Terraria code base and things like that. But uh, let's take a look at the actual code now. Public class starter bag derived from mod item. It is a type of item. That's what this means. This colon means derived from. Uh, mod item is the base class. Uh, probably is a type def for item. And let's take a look at our set static defaults. So we're just creating a wizard's pouch, giving a display name, and we're right clicking on it to open it. That's just our tooltip. Right click to open. Contains an assortment of magical goods. Awesome. Okay, cool. So that will just give ourselves our uh, name tooltip. Pretty standard stuff. We've covered that. And down over here, we have our set defaults. We're going to give ourselves a max stack of 999. And this is important. Make sure you set consumable equal to true. Let's make sure you can actually use it and right click on it. All right, awesome. Now let's check our item.width, 2424, rarities one and values 4,000, whatever. That's completely fine and arbitrary. Uh, public override bool can right click. So this is a function or a method that you can override that returns whether or not you can right click with this item when you're holding it. So by overriding this, returning true, it means we can right click with this item. And which is what we want, right? We want to be able to right click on the item and open it in our inventory. So right over here, we have our actual uh, function that is called when we right click on our item. So right here, we have our base.rightclick. And what that will do is, let's take a look. Base.rightclick. We can probably take a look at base. Right click. Can right click, return false. And right there it is. Public virtual void right click. And remember what we talked about earlier. Virtual void means we can overwrite it with our own functionality. So if we go back into our starter bag, that's what we're doing. We're saying we're calling the base dot right click, which when you think about it, we don't actually need to do because we're not, there's nothing actually in that right click function. So we could probably just get away with getting rid of that entirely. And we'll also just get rid of that comment because when I loaded it for some reason, it uh, messed up the comments. All right, awesome. I'll just get rid of that. Cool. And when we right click, we're going to call something called player dot quick spawn item. And this takes in, let's see the parameters. It takes in a source of I entity source and int item, which is the item ID and then the stack and how many of the item we want to uh, spawn on our player when we open our loot bag. So this will spawn a wand of sparking <laughs> when we right click it and only give ourselves a one of them, of course. This will spawn 75 of our fireballs, 10 of our magic souls, five herbs, three fallen stars, one mana crystal, and you get the idea. Now, the only thing that's really notable here that you should probably uh, take into consideration is this get source drop as item. Now, right here, this is kind of like the context in which this item is being created in. If we get rid of this one right here and we say player dot get source, you can see there's like a death context. There's like a uh, drop as item context. There's an accessory context. So there's a whole bunch of different contexts for which you can uh, spawn projectiles, accessories, and a bunch of other stuff. I remember having to specify the actual uh, slot index uh, of where to store the item. But I think saying yield return uh, starter item will actually deal with that for you, which is very, very nice. Uh, the implementation, of course, is hidden by you. You cannot access the implementation of uh, add starting items. That would be kind of uh, troublesome if you could. You can only access the definition. Okay, unless you decompile Terraria, in which case you could probably get access to it. But uh, typically, you want to hide your interfaces from the user. That's just good programming. But back to our game, you can see we have ourselves a wizard's pouch. We can right click it and we get all of these items. Let's kill these guys. There's a, for some reason, a, a large amount of, a, of, of zombies and demon eyes out tonight. But that's it right there. That's all you really have to do to make a starter bag or for that matter, even a treasure bag. Because here's the thing, the code is the exact same. The only thing you have to do for a starter bag is just override your uh, add starting items and make sure that you actually give yourself the item when you spawn in. The code for a starter bag is literally only this. You can add this to any existing item and or this and this and then also the consumable. And you pretty much have a treasure bag that you can drop uh, at any point in time. So say like you have an NPC, like a, a boss or something like that. You can just say player dot quick spawn item and then the item that you want, which would ideally be the uh, actual treasure bag. And then you open it and then all is well. So it's actually pretty straightforward. But I've learned that taking the time to understand the small things a lot 
uh, can really be helpful in the long run because then you'll understand how the larger things work and how all the components come together to actually make something uh, cool and unique. When I start my new tutorial series where I teach you guys how to make a game from scratch uh, in Game Maker Studio, which is, by the way, a free game engine, and you don't need any experience to watch this tutorial series. So if you're interested, you can actually uh, watch that when it comes out. But when I do uh, start that series, I'm going to be teaching a lot about engine architecture and uh, actual programming just like in general. I know I haven't been doing that very much lately besides a couple of older videos, uh, which I actually believe to be a little bit outdated uh, in terms of the way that I explain things. But uh, I definitely would recommend, you know, just taking the time to understand things and just let it sink in and not try and rush through uh, every single thing you do or just copy code off the internet because really in the long run, it's not going to help you at all. Unless, of course, you're just a hobbyist and you just want to get that treasure bag set up. If you guys want to support my future work, you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter with the link in the description or just join the Discord and be notified when new videos come out. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.